Um, now, keyframing, very important part of Roto is we, now we've got the curve, so we've created mats. We've created a shape that matches in the object we want to Roto. But that shape is changing through time, so we have to change our shape to match it as it goes through the shot. And the easiest way to do this, now the simplest way to do this is when people start out frame one, the outline, they go to frame two, adjust it, frame three, adjust it. That's very time consuming. Most rotors, you don't need to do every single keyframe. You can get away with doing every fourth frame or every second or eighth or sixteenth frame, depending on the motion. So, the first strategy is sequentially from frame one. It works, but it's really inefficient. And you'll be um, doing a lot of double, triple work. You, most, all, all rotoscoping systems have interpolation between keyframes. So what you want to try and do is set keyframes throughout the shot, and then use the, let the system interpolate your shape as it moves through the shot. So you'll move forward, say, eight frames, adjust your shape so it matches the object you're rotoing, move forward another eight frames, adjust your shape so it matches, save it, save it at every step. And then, um, with one-eighth of the keyframes, you already have a pretty good rough roto of what you're supposed to do. That's actually the technique I like the most. I just go, for most shots, not all, every eight frames, and then we're pretty much there. And then you, you render it, check your mats. The way you check your mats is you just, if you use the mat to cut out the background, and then you color grade it so it's a bright color. And then you put it back over the background so you can see through. And you're looking at a brightly colored version of the background within your mat over top of the background. And you can really see how the edges match. It's always good to check your work. So every eight frames is one strategy. Another strategy that people really like is look for major motion points in keyframe. Someone's moving his arm like this in the shot. And so you go through, you scroll through the shot, you look for where it's way up here. Make a keyframe, make your shapes match, you look for where it's down here, make another keyframe, you know, where your shapes match, and you go through, and that way when it interpolates, you already have a pretty good swing of the shapes will be close to where they are. Um, another one is just track a single shape to follow motion. Say for example you have a camera jitter and uh, you want a mat for the window. Well, in the simple way would be just draw a window and every keyframe adjust it. But you couldn't use motion tracking, which is you get a tracking curve for the motion of the object. Then you just, it's a compositing tool. Then you make one shape for the window, apply the tracking curve to the shape, and now you've got a roto for the window throughout the shot. So really it's good to look at your shots and figure out strategies that work best for what you're actually doing. Um, Another way, is, I call it binary chop, it's actually, binary chop is a sorting algorithm for sorting lists in alphabetical order. But you can kind of use it for roto, where you put a keyframe at the beginning, keyframe all the way at the end, put one in the middle, and then you go to the middle of those two sections, put another keyframe. Now for some movement, if you have very, you've got pretty much fixed, but it's handheld and it's just kind of slowly drifting like that, that's a pretty good method also. Um, for a lot of things, for fast movement or for explosions and debris, that really doesn't work at all. Again, I usually use just every eight frames because all the other things fall out. You know, you will eventually run around the point that's close to your stream points of motion, and it's fast, and you don't have to think. And um, that's what I generally use. Um, now, are there any questions? Okay. General strategies for approaching a shot. This is like how you would approach a shot once you have all the tools and you have your software. The first thing is you have to understand the problem. What is the problem? So the way you find that out, talk with your compositor, talk with your supervisor. You know, what do you want to go into here? For how long, for where, why do you want to use it? You know, how should we treat the blurry edges? All those kind of things. Communicate well, it's very important. And then also, review your shot before you start. Actually play your whole shot. Look at your shot before you start rotating, because you, you may find a better way to approach it. Uh, another strategy you work from the most information to the least. Say you have a crowd of people that all leave the room, or a crowd of people all come into the room. Start from the end point where they're all there, 
make all their maps for them, and then follow them out of the room, backwards, work from the end to the beginning. So start, set up your shapes where you see both the hands and you see the most information. Um, another really important thing is as you're animating, move group, move shape, move point. It's very easy, particularly on slow moving shots, to introduce a lot of air into your rotor just by the fact that you're moving points around by hand. You should really avoid moving points as much as possible. You should do everything by grabbing the whole group and moving it into place and then squishing in individual shapes and massaging them into place. And only as a last resort should you ever move a point. Because uh, you will, particularly if you have objects that are man-made with straight edges, it's very easy to get this kind of wobbling and that's introduced just by the fact that you're touching the system. And on, on the really complicated shots, it's, uh, Half of the difficulty is not just masking the shot, it's preventing yourself from introducing air that you have to take out again. Uh, another strategy I mentioned earlier, interpolation, let the machine do the work. You know, make major motion keyframes, let the machine, let the software interpolate the shapes and see how close it is. Um, another good strategy is something, is using a cutout shape. And this is something that I really like about ER with the AB rolls. Say you have a man running behind a tree. You need a mat for the man. Well, in Matador, you know, as I don't know how so well I can draw this, but here we'll make it simpler. It's, it's running behind this thing right here. Imagine it has all kinds of branches off. Of it. Well, you can imagine as he gets there, you know, to shape the shape, and as he comes out the other side, it's kind of complicated. But what you can use is just make a mat for the tree, just make a mat for the man, and just cut the tree out of the man. And it's much easier now. And you're not going around like this, and you just have two independent shapes that you're rotoscoping. That's a really an advantage of VR, the ability to do that. Um, another good uh, strategy is check your work. You know, make the test comp. I have a version of my home directory of a, uh, a new script you can use for testing, testing the map. But just make a brightly colored version of your map, put it on the background, play it. Do you see anything? Catch your eye. Um, and have someone else check your work. What time is it? Are we out of time? No. Oh, okay. Okay. And now, alternate methods is uh, sometimes you're going to have a situation where keyframing in a traditional roto isn't really going to work. And then it gets a little trickier. I mentioned tracking the shape on the window. I actually had to do that on the Grinch, where they shot something on the stage through trees but they didn't have a blue screen behind it. And, it. and so this hole in the trees that had ground that was exactly the same color as trees they wanted a mat for. And I couldn't just rotoscope it because I would lose all that feathery pine needle information on the edge of the tree. So what I did is actually a combination of things of all these. I pulled the key to begin with as best I could, a luminous key. And so I got kind of a rough mat. And I went in Matador and I painted it by hand in one shape. I painted it, so I cleaned it up by hand and, and used a little blur to make it match, so I had a good pat for that hole. Now, fortunately, this was shot on the soundstage, so it was a real wind to speak of. I don't some shots that were. And then, so after I painted the mat, I got a tracking curves off the shot and just tracked the mat into that hole, and that was a really good way to get a real feathery mat in some of where you couldn't really pull a key couldn't really grow to scope. And, uh, and another alternate method is if you have something with extreme motion blur. And this is usually something that the compositor does, that sometimes the roto artists might do, is uh, if you are rotoing something where there's a lot of motion blur, like a hand is swooping like that. And uh, some programs like Nuke, you can pull out the blur and you can fine tune the blur to match the blur on the frame. And you can either do that with some systems like just pulling out the blur out of the edge, or sometimes they used to actually digitally paint a blur to match that. Again, usually that's more of a composite than a rotor tool, but sometimes you might just pull out of the Then the last thing I have to talk about is, is rendering power. And generally, we render all the maps as sharp edge maps, you know, white mat on black background. The reason for that is that has the most information about the blur. Blurred map is less information. We want to give the compositor the 
the most information and let them blur it to suit their needs of the composite. Um, when you're done, tell someone. Tell your supervisor and the compositor his elements ready and that you're done and have your work checked. And the last thing is check back after two or three days. And see if it worked. You know. Just <laughs> just follow up. And that's good professional in general. So that's digital rough scoping as I understand it. If there's any questions.